don't worry, that's the last slide you'll see. Let's do some straight database talk, no slides. With the arrival of autonomous database, do we still need to partition tables manually? In the autonomous marketing, it seemed to imply that its self-tuning index creation capabilities is sufficient for massive performance increases, but no mention is made of data or index partitioning. This is because autonomous is a journey, not a destination. Let me explain what I mean by that. The first iteration of autonomous database, the things that we made autonomous were generally patching, particularly looking for security issues and what we call health checking. A lot of the facilities you might run manually on your system, things like cluster health check, trace file analyzer, autonomous health framework, all those things have been turned into automated solutions on our autonomous database. Now for customers, they didn't see this and they're like, well, it just looks like another database to me. But ultimately we added the autonomy first, probably where it mattered most, which is let's make sure that we're creating databases that are gonna be robust, never go down, and we're gonna detect problems before customers get exposed to them. The next line along that journey was, okay, how do we now more proactively make customer applications or databases run better? And the first thing there was automatic indexing. Now to explain how automatic indexing works, I just wanna spend one minute on this because it becomes pertinent to some other facilities which are coming soon. The overriding principle for automatic indexing is we can do no harm. It's, it's a bit like you would rather let a guilty man go free than send an innocent man to prison. Autonomous uh, works on the same principle. You would actually rather have things not running optimally at the risk of never making things run worse. And so automatic indexing adopts that policy, which means when we're looking to do automatic indexing, what we do is we might find some bad SQL, we'll create an index unusable first, which means it's an empty index, doesn't take up any space. Then we'll do an explain plan to see if the optimizer would maybe use it. Then we'll, if that passes, then we'll create that index, but it's invisible. And then we'll actually run that SQL. We'll actually take your SQL that's running slowly. And in the background, we'll have a job that runs that SQL literally to see if it's genuinely better. Because just because the optimizer is gonna use an index doesn't mean it's gonna make a execution run better. It might make it run slower. So it has to, the optimizer has to think it's gonna be better but then we prove it will genuinely be better and then we will let that index become active and visible. So it's always that policy of, we're never gonna make things worse. We have this no harm policy. We're always gonna to strive to make things better. The price of that ultra cautious facility is that we, burn, we, we work harder because we actually had to create that index fully and then we had to run your SQL to make sure it was gonna be better. And obviously at a larger scale, if you've got 100 SQLs that need to be performance improved or we find 100 bad SQLs, we might create 10 indexes to have serve those and then we're gonna run those 100 SQLs in the background to make sure that they all get better. That's how automatic indexing works. That's just one path along the journey. What you do have now in Autonomous, but once again, it's set to off by default is automatic partitioning. Why do we set it off by default? Think about what we have to do if we're gonna adopt that same ultra cautious attitude. What automatic partitioning does is looks at your table, which say has a billion rows, and says, looking at the queries against that table, that's a good candidate for partitioning. But I can't just go, you know, let's just partition it and see what happens because that's not that ultra cautious approach. We will take your billion row table, we will copy it to a partitioned billion row table. Then we will take those queries that were running against your non-partitioned table and run them against this partition version and see if the queries get better. And if they do, then we will look at moving, doing a migration. So think about that for a second. Because of our position, our mandate that we will never make things worse, we always have a ultra cautious approach. We pay a price in terms of work. We are gonna copy a billion row table to our partition table. This is why we don't just, when people say, I'm using autonomous, we don't just like throw an auto, auto partitioning by default because that's gonna work their system pretty hard. But the facility is there. Automatic indexing does work hard, but nowhere near to the level that potentially big tables might with automatic partitioning. But the facility is there. It's available today on your autonomous databases. You can activate automatic partitioning. The other next step along the journey is automatic materialized views. Same thing, we'll see queries 
in particular things like aggregation style queries running against large tables. If those tables appear to be predominantly static in terms of their data, we might suggest, once again, a facility where we do materialized views with automatic query rewrite. The facility, I think, is actually already live now as well. Once again, turned off by default, but the facility is there for you. It's a good question in the sense that when Autonomous Database first came out, people said, where's the autonomous part? Then we went autonomous indexing and people said, oh yeah, that makes sense. It's a little bit autonomous, but yeah, it's a journey. We now have the aut autonomous partitioning, the autonomous materialized views, and more things will continue to come. Once again, making it a much more fully and fleshed out autonomous offering.